All right, seventh hour. Sorry, I can't do this live for all the other classes I am, but I've got an appointment right now. Uh, okay, so reactions to reading the introduction of Caritas and Veritate. Take 10 seconds, think about that. All right, so it's hard to read for a lot of people. You guys will get better at it. That's one of the purposes of this whole exercise is to increase your theological uh, vocabulary and competency, your competence at reading uh, this theology. But hopefully um, that, was the, that was probably the most abstract section of the entire thing. It's going to get a little bit easier to read, I hope, as we keep going. All right, uh, so let's summarize the introduction here. First of all, Caritas and Veritate, love in truth. One of the major overarching themes here that the Pope is getting at is that authentic love can never be separated from the truth. Okay. What does that mean? Okay, love means willing the good of the other as other. That's what agape love in the New Testament means. Willing the good of the other as other. This means, I've talked about this a little bit before, that I want what's best for you without any self-interest, without concern for how that affects me. <clears throat> okay, so um, as a teacher, if I want you to pass my class, but only so that I don't have to deal with you next year, that's not love, okay? I'm willing you're good passing my class, but for my own sake. Okay, what would be love would be for me to want you to pass my class because I want you to succeed in, your, in life. Even if that cause, it costs me time where I have to come in, I have to tutor you outside of class or something like that, okay? For me to give up something of my own time and effort and energy and convenience and all of that in order to come tutor you after school just so you pass the class so that you can succeed in life, all right, that would be authentic, willing the good of the other as other. Okay, why can't this be separated? Oh, hold on. So the Pope talks about this as, to love someone is, a, is to desire that person's good and to take effective steps to secure it. So love isn't just at the level of what I want for you. I also have to do something in order to make that good happen for you. Okay, so it's active. Why can't that be separated from truth? Well, it's because basic human goods are objective. Like we talked about with the natural law, okay, the basic human goods are the same for all of us. Life, food and clean, drinking water fruitful, meaningful work, community, communion with other persons, um, you know, reproduction, uh, seeking God, all of those things, they're, they're the same for all of us. They're rooted in human nature. So those things are objectively good for us. Okay. So even though we can each have an individual calling, right, my life isn't supposed to look exactly like yours, love has to be based on objective reality. Okay. I can't will your good apart from what is objectively good for you. All right, does that make sense? Um, okay, what does that mean? Well, that means that if I'm truly going to love you, I can't just let you do whatever you want to do. Because if what you want to do is bad for you, then I have to speak up, okay? So for example, my kids, they're five and three. Okay, if I let them, they would probably pick junk food for every single meal. Okay, my daughter would pick, you know, chips and uh, crackers, which crackers are fine. Okay, but um, all she would eat would be salt and carbs. And my son would be uh, just eating sugar. Well, if I let them pick what they wanted for every meal, that's obviously not going to be good for them because they'd never get the nutrition that they needed. And they'd only get filled with junk. Okay, so it's not loving for me to let them do what they want to do because they don't know what's good for them. All right, so this philosophy of live and let live, okay, uh, where, okay, you do you and I'll do me, okay? I'll let you do what you want if you just let me do what I want. That has its limitations if we're actually going to truly love one another. Because if you're doing something or you want to do something that's objectively bad for you, I have to speak up out of love. I have to discourage you from doing that out of love, okay? And we all know that, you know, if your best friend wanted to do something that was going to really harm them, okay, jump off a bridge, right, or started down the path of a drug addiction, 
right? You would know it's not loving to just let them do that. Okay, we all know that. It's what we disagree on is necessarily what's good for us, what's good for other people, okay? But live and let live, that has serious limitations if we're actually gonna love one another. Okay, uh, he also talks about how Jesus Christ is the perfect union of love and truth, all right? Uh, so he is Logos, which is the mind of God, eternal, uh, all-knowing truth, okay? He is also agape, love. So Christ is both love and truth united in his very person. So his life and his teachings are our models for how to live out caritas and veritate. Uh, love is the heart of Catholic social teaching as well. That's the principle and basis for all relationships. Right, micro relationships on an individual or family level, as well as macro relationships between um, countries and economic realities and uh, different groups in society. Okay, so love that agape love, willing the good of the other as other, that has to be the basis for all of our relationships. Okay, okay, uh, and then he says, love and truth is then the basis for authentic human development. If we're going to make progress, true progress as a human race, we have to do so out of love, rooted in truth. Okay. All right. So is it always loving to let someone do what he or she wants to do? Take five seconds. Think about that. Okay. Like I just said, no. Okay. That would be false. Uh, because sometimes what somebody wants to do is not objectively good for them. So you're not willing their good by, by letting them do that or encouraging them to do that. Okay. All right. Um, continuing the introduction, you got two main concerns that the Pope brings up, justice and the common good, both of which we've talked about, right? So love, he says, goes beyond justice, but you can't have love without justice. Okay. So justice is a necessary condition, you could say, for love. Okay, justice gives to others what is theirs, or as we talked about before break, justice gives to others what, what belongs to them by right. So, if you're entitled to a certain good, justice would demand that I give you access to that good, okay? Justice demands that you are owed the good of life, therefore I don't kill you, right? Or uh, you pay for something, you're now entitled to that good that you paid for, therefore justice would demand that I give that to you just like you paid for it, okay? But love gives what is one's own to another while also giving them what is theirs. Okay, so love then would be for me to give you not just what you paid for or what you are owed, but then something that belongs to me out of total gratuitousness, okay? So uh, for example, let's say that, I mean, just a common everyday thing, you buy a car from me, okay? And I give you the car, okay? You give me the money, I give you the car, boom, justice, okay? But uh, if I wanna go beyond justice, I could also give you a $50 Speedway gift card for extra gas. I didn't have to do that, you didn't pay for that, right? It doesn't belong to you by right. It actually belongs to me, but I'm just giving it to you out of generosity. So. Now, if I just, if you paid for the car, I gave you the Speedway gift card, and then I didn't give you the car, that wouldn't be love. Even though you're not owed the Speedway gift card, it still wouldn't be love, because I'm not giving you, first of all, what is yours, which is the car. So love has to give what is yours and a little bit of what is mine as well, okay? So love gives to others what is theirs, and then some. Love goes beyond justice. Okay, that's where this whole idea of gratuitousness comes in as well. So a society then, if we're going to build a civilization of love, a society built on love, has to first respect justice. Okay, uh, love and justice are both, they both require working for the common good. Okay, so the sum total of social conditions that allow all of us to pursue fulfillment fully and easily. Right, creating these social conditions that are conducive to human fulfillment. Love and justice both require that. All right, he, the Pope calls this the institutional path to charity. It involves government, public policy, businesses, other organizations, institutions. It's not just individuals. Okay, and we'll see how that 
gets unpacked as we go. So he says, to take a stand for the common good is on the one hand to be solicitous for, and on the other hand to avail oneself of that complex of institutions that give structure to the life of society, juridically, civilly, politically, and culturally, making it the polis or city. In other words, for the common good, we have to both seek the benefit, seek the, the good of, and also take advantage of um, all the institutions in society. So the legal system, um, businesses, okay, political systems, our culture, using all of those things to benefit one another and to set things up in a way that we can pursue fulfillment. Okay. All right. So, love and justice always contradict each other. True or false? Take five seconds. Okay, false, obviously. Love doesn't contradict justice. Okay, it goes beyond justice. To give not just what is yours, but to give you also something that is mine. All right, closing quote here. Only in charity illumined by the light of reason and faith is it possible to pursue development goals that possess a more humane and humanizing value. The sharing of goods and resources from which authentic development proceeds is not guaranteed by merely technical progress and relationships of utility, but by the potential of love that overcomes evil with good, opening up the path towards reciprocity of consciences and liberties. Reciprocity is mean means reciprocity means that uh, you are looking out for me and I'm looking out for you. It's a reciprocal relationship. Mutually, we're both looking to benefit one another. Okay. All right. We'll stop there. We'll pick up on Thursday and prepare for the movie next week. Oh, boy. Okay, there we go. All right, see you then.